Well, welcome to the Rescue and Revive Gospel Show. Your host, Domenico Denisi, and I'm back after a couple months. I we've had our our guest host, Pastor John Souza, whose birthday was yesterday, by the way. Happy birthday to him. He did a fantastic job the last two months filling in. But we're back today at Rescue and Revive Ministry Headquarters with Pastor Dan Astudo of Greece Assembly Church on Long Pond Road, but also you're the director of Mission Share. Is that correct, Dan? That's correct. So why don't we start off, thanks for coming in, by the way. Great to be here. Yes, I know you're busy, pastor schedule, uh, so on and so forth, director, <laughs> father, all the other husband, things that go along with that role. Start off by just telling me a little bit. One thing you had asked me when we were talking mm -hmm. a little bit about my testimony. Mm -hmm. So you want to take just a couple minutes uh, just to let the people know who are watching Facebook Live or going to be listening on WYSL or maybe podcast down the road. Just take a couple minutes to tell them about how did you come to, what's your conversion story? How did you come to know Christ? Yeah. So I grew up in a uh, preacher's home, pastor's home in New Jersey. Okay. My father uh, pastored uh, two churches over my upbringing in New Jersey. So I grew up in the church. Um, five years old is when I responded uh, wow. you know, to what I thought um, was an altar call. We called sure. it back in the day. It gave my heart to the Lord. Um, but it was... Um, it was about 16 and a half, 17 years old, where I felt like, to me, that was my God moment. Uh, okay. For me, my idol was basketball. Mm. Um, I thought I would maybe be good enough to play in the NBA. You're good, though. I remember <laughs> playing with you. You're good. You're good yeah. enough to, to run so, guys off the floor at YMCA. Yeah. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. So um, we, after that, you know, realization that there's no chance in me being Larry Bird at the time or whoever, <laughs> um, I, I just remember sitting in my dad's teaching on a Wednesday night, and the Lord, I felt, spoke to my heart and said, Dan, is it going to be me or, or basketball? That was That's like good. literally yeah. what came to me. And I, I, for me, that was when the calling really I answered in my life where I said, God, you know, I want, I want you. And I laid down the idol of basketball at that point. The Lord opened the door for me to go to a Bible college out in Springfield, Missouri, um, uh, to follow the calling as far what as being trained in Central Bible College. Okay. Yeah, so some of the God uh, school that now merged recent, well, recently, probably 10 years ago with Evangel University. Okay. They merged with them. Okay. So some way to God school. But at that time, so I played uh, my freshman year. We were blessed to actually won the national championship for NCCAA my freshman year. The only game I didn't play in was the national Just championship Just watch the tab game. and it'll pick up. Go ahead. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, God, uh, that's where I met my wife, okay. and that's really where I followed. How many years have you been married now? Um, 26 years. You had to think about month, it for a second. Is she going to watch it? I don't hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm listening to you talk about basketball, and very briefly, I shared the role basketball had in my life. I just told you that I wanted yeah. to be a varsity coach. I was very close to that. Ended up being a varsity coach a couple years ago, but that was 20 years after I had started my uh, goal for that. And just... For me, basketball, like you, was such a, it became a vision quest, so to speak. Like, as I was totally, totally uh, engrossed, absorbed in that, mm -hmm. in the coaching arena, and I had to lay it down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, everything's totally different. And so I understand that, right? Jesus said, no man can serve to, two masters. Now, all of a sudden, pastors, ministers, you understand that. Um, what was the biggest what was the biggest lesson you learned in that? And then we'll fast forward up to, to current events in your yeah. current position. But what was the biggest lesson you learned going through that? Well, as you shared earlier, your yeah. story, I was kind of in my spirit laughing yeah. because it was so similar. Right. The lesson for me, I just went down memory lane as you yeah. were sharing because when I, the Lord spoke to me specifically at Bible college where we were actually doing ministry as a basketball team okay. around the country, wherever the Lord led us. Wow. When I came back my sophomore year, I could have walked right on and started. God said, you're wow, not that's playing. that's amazing. Isn't that something? And I said, what do you mean, yeah. Lord? And he goes, you're not playing. And everybody in my life looked at me like, what are you talking yeah. about? You're at right. Bible college. Yep. You're doing ministry. You're preaching. What do you yeah. mean? Like, this, wouldn't God yep. want you to go preach the gospel? And I couldn't explain couldn't it. Explain but it. I knew God yeah. said no. You know, and, and God gave it back to me. Yes. Later, yes. my senior year, I'm working at a fast food place trying to make right. a few bucks to pay my college bills. It was totally out of my life. It was not an idol right. anymore. I get a call. All these players went down. Coach wants to know why you're not playing. I'm like, what do you mean why I'm not yeah. playing? I, I haven't. 
played for two years. Right. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and say, Dan, you've done what I asked you to do if you want to that's play. Am- that's but awesome. I don't anymore. So similar. <laughs> but you as a player, me as a coach, because you were a much better player. Than no. You know, it's, trust me, you no. were. I've seen you play. But it's so similar, almost identical. That's what happened with me in coaching. And I ended up coaching my daughter um, at North Star Christian two years ago. And it was surreal to me. It was surreal. Wow. And no one could understand it unless you were in my shoes, that this was something 20 years ago was my number one goal. It was a, a, an obsession to mm-hmm. Now it came back to me, and it was, a, it was just it was different, though. Mm-hmm. I was able to do it. I wouldn't have been able to do it back then. Just like you, having the chance to play, I remember very well, I had a chance to be the Holly girls varsity basketball coach. They, gave, mm-hmm. they were going to give me the position. It was 05 going into 06, and I was wrestling. And my wife, I'm downstairs in my basement, and my wife, I go, well, babe, what do you think? Because I was the JV girls coach at Sutherland at the time. Great position, Mm -hmm. but I wanted to be the varsity coach, right? And she just said something that just so pricked my heart. Like, basically, babe, I just don't think, I don't think it's right, or I don't think you're ready, something like that. And tears just started flowing down my face, man. Uh, I'll never forget it, because it was pivotal. Well, here's the goodness of God. Not only they were upset, I didn't take the position, mm-hmm. Holly, because I said I would. But like you, I did the hard thing. I stayed at JV at Sutherland. The girls varsity ended up winning the state championship mm-hmm. as a number five. It was crazy, right? So God gave me an outside look. Is this what you want? You, you this is what a state championship looks like. Mm-hmm. Is this? And and I could. There's nothing wrong. It's great. But God had a different pathway. Mm-hmm. And when He gave it back to me, right, it was just way different. It wasn't my God, right? Because no man, like I said, could serve two right. masters. So. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Great. I didn't think we talked about basketball <laughs> this much, but it's part of our story yeah. um, in serving the Lord in the capacity we do now. So let's fast forward to today. Mm-hmm. Tell the people about, because I've heard a lot about Mission Share. I know what you do, but I've never physically been there, which I want to change that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a parachurch ministry like Rescue and Revive is. Mm-hmm. And I think it's kingdom-based because you work with a number of people. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about how Mission Share started, what you do daily operations. Yes. So in 93, 30 years ago, uh, yeah. this year, uh, Pastor Pat, the lead pastor of yes. Assembly, and known well. two He's friends known well. yep. their, and their wives had a desire, basically, this is a quick story, to do a uh, community like Christmas dinner for those okay. that couldn't afford maybe Christmas presents right. and just bless the community. They put it on in our gymnasium at Greece Assembly. I think over 200 people came out. Just a very, they were like, wow, the, the need is actually yeah, more than great. we thought. Sure. And, um, they ended up making a classroom into uh, a, a place for to correct, uh, collect non-perishable foods. And as people came in, said they needed some help financially or food, they just started um, giving them food. And then Pastor Pat, through his network of uh, with other pastors in the community, said, "Hey, why don't we put something out in the community that is kingdom-minded? It's not a Greek assembly yeah, yeah. thing. We sure. should be feeding people. We should be sharing the gospel." Yeah outside of these four walls. So that's in a nutshell, we started looking about 20 years ago for a facility, and I think about 13 years ago, it took several years, we landed on this place where we're at now, Cedarford Commons, about a mile and a half north of Greece, and um, ended up buying that whole strip mall. And um, we have about 5,200 square feet where we have a clothing center and a food market and pregnancy care and some other services that we offer free of charge to the community. They can come, anybody can come um, every 30 days and receive food and clothing. And um, my exciting part is it's a great opportunity to show the gospel. gospel. Yeah, because yeah. people come in, sure. and you, why are you here, and then can, can I pray for you? Can exactly. I share my faith with you? Yep. And a lot of people are open to that. Yeah. And what you're doing is, it's the old adage, people, um, you know, they need to know, and I'm, I'm not going to say it right, so I'll just say, they basically, they, they need to know how much you care. Right. Right. Um, and that's exactly what you're doing. You're, you're being the hands and feet of Christ, which allows you to then be the mouth of Christ, mm-hmm. the mouthpiece of Christ. So that's awesome. Yeah. How many years now has it been? So I think we've been in that facility since um, 2009. So I guess that'd be 14. Years. And the exact location of it? 10 Cedarfield Commons in Greece. Right, which is, it's off Long Pond, is that correct? correct. Yeah, yeah, right it? across from um, a Wesley Long Pond family restaurant. is now yes. built. I just had a fish fry there a couple yes. of weeks ago. Not yeah, bad. Right Not across bad. the way there. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's let's shift over to Greece Assembly. You've been a, a associate pastor, I guess, right? For how many years? So I've been in the role as executive pastor for thirteen years. Okay. Um, executive the, pastor. The, 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 pri- the previous 
Let me think. Eight years. Eight I was years a student pastor. So I've been gotcha. there a little over 21 years. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, on so staff long time. There. Yeah. Long time. Lessons you've learned in that role. I mean, I know they're endless. Yeah. How well, about what I did learn is executive pastor means anything the senior pastor wants it to mean. <laughs> after meeting a bunch of other That's a great title. Pastors, really, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. some business heavy, administrative yeah. heavy, some head of small sure. groups, head of whatever. Um, but you know, it's interesting. Yeah. That's because it's, it's, this Sunday I'm, I'm, I'm continuing in Nehemiah 12, but that sounds like a Levite almost. Levites mm -hmm. were singers. Uh, they were porters, you know, they did multiple things, almost like an executive or maybe an assistant pastor. Mm -hmm. So you really are uh, multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you have to do what, what maybe Pat's not able to do or ask you to do. The other thing is I know you have freedom mm -hmm. being the director of mission share. I know that you're able to go over you're able to preach on Sunday mornings, different places, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's blessing, right? yeah, that's gotta be great. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's gotta be wonderful. Um, so I'm sure that that has its, uh, you know, has its, challenges but also has its opportunities and so uh, that seems to probably fit your your calling as well yeah sure. you know i know for myself autonomy is very very important what i'm called to do mm -hmm. and it's probably the same way with you um going back here for a second let's go let's hit the rewind button mm -hmm. you, i think you said 26 years of marriage yes how many you, you have three daughters correct and now you know i know hannah because yes. she was a student of mine at North Star. Yep. The other two, not as well, but mm -hmm. I know I just ran into your wife at Marshall's. Yeah, with Madison. The home, Madison, yeah. thank you. Uh -huh. So we, we were briefly just talking about a couple mm -hmm. things before we went on Facebook Live. And, and one thing I, I, need, I think people need to always hear from pastors and ministers in general, mm -hmm. there's a lack, perhaps, of transparency, which doesn't help people, mm -hmm. um, lay people, so to speak, right? People mm -hmm. who are not in quote-unquote full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. We were talking about some of the challenges that we faced. Can you do you have a real heart wrenching or heart challenging testimony of, of you and your family or you and your wife during these last twenty one years when you've been in ministry that you'd like to share with the people? Um, well, I, I will say, I mean, it's hard at the time to say that it's constantly, I'm still growing as mm -hmm. far uh, in that role. You know, I knew growing up, I, I was blessed, and I, I use that word blessed, to grow up in a ministry home. I right. know there's a lot of PKs, we call them, um, Pastor kids, that, right? that yeah. you know, would not mm -hmm. put anything of the, the word blessing near that, you know, right. I feel, you know, and for various reasons, there's so sure. many dynamics involved. Um, I'm blessed. My parents actually just, my dad just retired from full-time ministry last summer and moved to Rochester. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to have, you know, my parents in town for the first time in 20 that's amazing. Years. Yeah. So um, it was a very positive experience for me. I would like to think for my children it's that way. Yeah. Um, but I know early on in my years, as I shared with you, starting some ministries like Upward Basketball yeah, yeah. and some things when my kids were younger, yeah. um, I wasn't, I didn't balance well. And, right. you know, I think my family's always been gracious from my wife yeah. to my youngest daughter. Um, I, I, at the end of the day, they knew I loved them. But I, I hope that, you know, um, everything that I did, at, yeah. right and wrong, um, they'll get it I and they'll serve and follow sure. Jesus. That's sure. all I want as a sure. dad. Yeah, you, you talk about that word balance. Mm -hmm. um, so important. I, I call it kind of like this. It's kind of like a tug of war going on sometimes, right, with between the church or the ministry responsibilities and your family. And, and you don't always get it right. Mm -hmm. And I think growing in it is, is very, very true. What are some tips? You could get maybe somebody's considering going to ministry here or they are, they're young, into it, they're just starting out. What would be the best advice you could give someone who's about to go into a pastoral role? They're about to go off as a missionary. Gotta hit my phone for you. You know, I would say if they're not married, yes. um, number one, to be praying because it's very important that who you do marry yeah. understands the call. Right. And if they don't have that, it, I mean, I'm just speaking to the single person right. now that may be dating somebody, engaged, whatever it is. That's so important. Right. you got to have that conversation now because right. your wife is true. We, You have to be one. Yeah, you you have to be one. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's very clear. So I guess, you know, for, for maybe the, the young married guy that feels a calling and maybe mm -hmm. he's doing training, you know, online, seminar, whatever, you know, uh, to me, the most area that I would focus on is just my wife and I being on the same page communication yeah. um, up front 
but confident in the call that Gal has and leading mm. in love and leading well. Um, yeah. This is not just by experience positively. This is also right from negative. how I fell yeah. and, and, and knocked out. I hope people were getting that. Yeah. Well, mistakes can make mistakes can be the best teachers. Right. You exactly. learn from them, especially particularly with men, um, have a tendency to be prideful and hard headed, right. and you learn from mistakes right mm -hmm. often, and and that's a wonderful thing. I want to talk about Upward Bound because my kids did that program for one year. It's widely popular. Yeah. I mean, huge enrollment. But you talk about you're not overseeing that now, but I know when you did. Mm -hmm. How much of a task was that? This is a big, big undertaking. Yeah. Well, a, a guy uh, by the name of Brian touched on I flew down because the national ministry out of yeah. South Carolina okay. and got trained on it. And, um, you know, we had no idea. We just, and, and shared with Pastor Pat, we just had this desire. We have this big gym with a right. concrete floor. Sure. We can, everybody, I mean, it seemed like in our community of Greece wants to play basketball. We have right. GBA and these yep. different leagues. So why not get people to come here, and then we have the wonderful privilege to share the gospel yeah. with them and to do so much more. So that's that's really where the vision started. We flew down to Florida. We got trained on it, came back. We The church made an investment for a hardwood floor, some hoops. And the very first year, which was like 17 years ago, we had exactly 99 kids right before the start, and one kid signed up and the day before, and we ended up with 100 kids the first season and got to share the gospel. But I was the director, coach, and ref, uh, man, a manager of the sweeping the floor. I did everything. And that was part of the lot. executive pastor yeah. title. There, we, it was see? just me, Brian, yeah. and we all wear many hats. But thank God to this day, I mean, we, we've had over six or 700 players in the league from the west side. It's considered the, the, the largest, as far as I, I heard, on the west side basketball league because of the excellence it provides, even from the skill set of basketball. That's why parents are bringing their kids, but yeah. we're, we're looking way beyond that to yeah. all these people getting to hear a gospel witness every halftime uh, between yeah. their kid or grandkid you know, playing the game, which is exciting. Yeah, and, and my kids did that one year, and I, I recall that, you know, a couple of the different speakers and standing out and just really, I thought that, I thought it was extremely strong in the spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that I thought was even stronger than the basketball aspect, mm -hmm. to be honest. And so quite a popular program. It reminds me also, you know, Grace and Truth mm -hmm. over there. Yep. Uh, First Bible Baptist, Grace and Truth, you have Upward Bound. My kids have been part of those programs, the Happy Five Soccer. They're yes. aged out a couple of them well, from it, yeah. right? Um, I've always been thankful, my, two of my boys are playing flag football now, because what that does let's use the term balance again mm -hmm. it allows them part to participate in sports mm -hmm. athletics but it's a competitive balance mm -hmm. right you try to you have the christian component there the devotional the prayer whatever the case may be but also allow them and they do it at the same time mm -hmm. and you with three children but me having six mm -hmm. i would the advice i would give to people is whatever you can do at the same time yes that often helps yeah. right yeah. so how do you cultivate let me ask you this how have you been able to cultivate families or help families because i know you have a number of them mm -hmm. at greece assembly or through mission share yeah um you know i think one of the greatest things yeah. that i've seen over the last few years is families doing a lot of this stuff together even right. the kids that are have uh grown out of upward or now the assistant coaches and their little brother or sister they're coaching right them. i love seeing yeah, families serve family together yep. and i think that to me is great when mom and dad or maybe you know maybe dad's coaching mom's bringing in the you know the snack for but when fam we have several families at greece assembly that are doing ministries like upward and some of these uh, outreach serving at mission share yeah. together to me that's huge as a family can serve together that is because it's a challenge i mean it's i'm looking at my watch here we got about maybe mm -hmm. eight minutes left but mm -hmm. it's a challenge uh today for families in general it's mm -hmm. a challenge for marriages it's just that we just have challenges generally speaking today and anything we could do to help people out in those capacities is uh you know going to help them obviously in their relationship with christ and the advancement mm -hmm. of the gospel of jesus christ so moving forward now let's talk about the future mm -hmm. what do you see for the future of mission share greece assembly uh dan Estudo, any mm -hmm. of it um man there's so much i mean when you look at the world that we're in today, yeah. um, you just go, God, you know, what's going on? You it's know, crazy. Um, what's next? I don't know. 
I really have actually tried to put on the brakes and say, God, what do you have for me today? Sometimes I'm, I, I think it's good to plan and I'm not putting that out. Of, but I really don't know what next year brings. I really don't. Right. I'm praying about it. I'm thinking, where can we go as mission share? But I, I have been amazed by the grace of God this past year, really since COVID hit, when we thought, um, you know, we had to change. We couldn't, we, we used to have people come in and pick their groceries with a volunteer. And, and now no one can touch anything. You got to wear a mask. Right. We had to just change everything change overnight. Everything. Great challenges. And for us, it was, let's bring the food to their cars. People still need food. So we'll do that and so forth. And, and we have just seen God open doors for us to hit outside of Greece, Hilton, and Charlotte. Because Mission Share was yeah. birthed. has just hit those sure. three communities. Now we have city ministries that we've been able to somehow, the, the, through relationships, meet that are going to the streets in yep. Rochester, they're yep. going to Tent City and some of these places, and we're able to give them our perishable food, like meals from Wegmans that are going to expire in a couple of days that we can't hold on to from Thursday to Tuesday. Yeah. People will come, we pack their cars, and they go and they give it, give out. it, out, they give it out. And these people are ministry-minded. That's what yes. God's linked us with. Yes. So it's not just feeding the homeless, which we're thankful to do, right. But they're, you know, giving gospel tracts. Yep. These people yep. are willing to share the gospel. Yep. And to me, that's why we exist, Mission Show. That's yeah. the whole difference is sharing God's love in practical ways through food and yeah. clothing and the gospel witness. So, you know, I think that's just going to continue to expand. I mm -hmm. want to believe that. Even, even with what you're doing here mm -hmm. through your ministry, mm -hmm. I think, you know, as we can, you know, help these can ministries with sure. drinks or yeah, food no or practical ways, clothing, yep. um, it's been great. Yeah. Awesome stuff. I think I know we're in some of the same circles. So, you know, of course, mm -hmm. uh, probably Dan Soto. You might know yes, Dan Soto, yeah, right? Julio, Thursday of course. Comes, yeah. Right. So that we're linked together. Month, yeah. and, that, and that's what, like I told you, Rescue and Revive Ministries is about the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. it's, always, um, it's always king over castle, right? It's got to be preeminently about the gospel of Jesus Christ. If your tribe, your denomination, your whatever is more important, then it's just not going to work out. And you obviously... You have the same heart and the same mind mm -hmm. when it comes to mission share and Greece Assembly too. I mean, I've I've seen in Greece Assembly all the missions that are supported. I think mm -hmm. they're up on the wall, and of course we have a relationship with, uh, with my safety training business too. I do mm -hmm. the training over there, so it's it's all tied together, yeah. and it's a beautiful thing when brothers and sisters in Christ can work together for the cause yeah. of Christ, right? Yeah. So with that being said, I told you go by fast. I will tell you what your future holds in about thirty minutes. Okay, launch, <laughs> right? I'm happy with that. <laughs> But we, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But we only have, well, we have a few minutes left. What mm -hmm. I do every show, we always end the same way. Mm -hmm. Even when Pastor John fills in, he does the same thing. So we always finish with asking the guest or guests, depending on how many are in, to finish with uh, sharing the gospel with those mm -hmm. people that are watching, mm -hmm. which those are listening. So we'll give you two minutes. Most people, I give 30 seconds yeah. or 60 seconds. Yeah. But just in a couple minutes, um, if you want to just, Share the good news of Jesus Christ, right? Because that's what gospel means for those of you who don't know. Yeah. Just share the gospel. What would you? Uh, how would you do that with somebody that was listening on the radio today, or someone you were talking with one on one? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would have them look uh, first of all and ask themselves who Jesus is. I mean, Great Jesus. Question. Jesus, to me, because I've studied the top religions. Mm -hmm. I have this book written by a guy named Ray Comfort, yep. World Religions in a Nutshell, and. Um, you know, it's great because it gives a quick overview. And the bottom line is what you'll see, even if you step back without faith, without wanting to read the Bible and just mm -hmm. look, what do these religions believe and think? Right. You will find, it's factual, all of them are about your good out doing your bad. They're works-based. Okay. So what I would have you, the listener here, that maybe hasn't made a decision to be a Christ follower or put their faith mm -hmm. in Christ, is just step back and assess everything out there. Um, You'll find that all the isms out there from Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Mormonism, all of these, they're all about doing. That's right. And Christianity flips the table. It's done. That's what Christ did. And, and to me, that just excites me, the mm -hmm. gospel, that we don't have to do. Christ did it. That's right. And, 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 and really consider that. Read, start, go through, open the Bible, look at the Gospel of John, study this man, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who we believe to be the Son of God, which mm -hmm. changes everything, mm -hmm. and see how what he did and how he backed it up. To me, what backs up the power in Jesus Christ is mm -hmm. the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. 
Christ. No one else. You can. We can go to Joseph Smith's tomb. We can go. You know, people put their faith in these different leaders and stuff, and they're all dead. And some of them have tombstones somewhere. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. To me, that's the gospel. And I, I, I could go on for another thirty minutes on, yeah. on just this. Yeah. But in a nutshell, I would just encourage any listeners there that aren't sure, just step back yes. and look. Because yeah. to me, the resurrection changes yeah. everything. Amen. Crucifixion, resurrection, inseparable events. And you're absolutely right. Who else rose from the dead and said that he would? Conquered the grave. So abs the first thing you said, who Jesus is, that's always the key. Because a lot of these religions believe in Jesus. They know a Jesus, but it's not the Christ that we believe in. Mm -hmm. It's not the same Jesus. So great way to intro, great way to start that. Thanks for coming on, oh, man. I really pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah. I told you it would go by quick. So when I arrive, we have a couple. So we have some summer events coming on. Follow the cloud. Um, open air worship services at Liberty Pole coming up at the last Sunday evening in July. And then we'll be at the Moose Lodge in Henrietta the last Sunday in August. Everybody's invited out to those. Uh, thank you for your support, your, your prayers of Rescue and Revive Ministries. Um, feel free to be in touch with us uh, for anything that you need. Last thing, mm -hmm. got about a minute. Tell the people how they could contact or get in touch with you regarding uh, Mission Share. Yeah, so the biggest thing would be go to our website, missionshareoutreach.org. Um, we are gearing up next week. We open our registration for our golf classic. That's our one and only yes, fundraiser. And Dom's uh, played in it. And, <laughs> and, and many people have. We sold out three years straight. So we don't think it's an issue of yeah. getting golfers. We, we're pretty confident yeah, yeah. we'll... we'll We'll sell out again, but we'd love to have any kind of sponsorships just to help us um, fund the ministry of Mission Chair through the rest of the year. Um, and that's, again, you can find that information on our website. Great golf tournament, still at yeah. Ridgemont? Still is, at least for this yeah, year. Yeah, we got second place. It wasn't because of me, <laughs> but we got Steve Higgs. If you know Steve, he's oh, a great golfer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we had a great time at that tournament. It was great. Yeah. So please, come on out, sign up for that. You'll have a great time. Yeah. Thanks for watching or listening to the Rescue and Revive Gospel Show today. God bless you in Jesus' name.